Good evening. Part of Coventry City Football Club was officially put up for sale today. The administrators were brought into the club two months ago. Anxious Sky Blues fans now fear for the future of their club with no idea where Coventry City will be playing next season. But what exactly would a buyer get for their money? Well, it's a complicated story, so let's explain what's going on. CCFC Limited has been in administration since March with debts of £60 million. It's this part of the club which is now up for sale, but the actual team comes under the control of Coventry City Holdings, which is not in administration. It owns the contracts of the manager, Stephen Presley, and his squad. So who's likely to be interested in taking over the club? This is Preston Haskell IV. Uh, a multi-millionaire property developer from America. He's a confirmed bidder, but there are thought to be others. But here's the nub of the matter. Anyone who buys the club would only do so if they also acquired the golden share. That gives the club the right to play in the Football League. And no one seems to know who's got it. Here's Dan Pallet. They thought this was the beginning of the end. Eight weeks ago at the High Court in London, an administrator was appointed to sort out Coventry City's finances. It's proved yet another false dawn. And last night, Coventry fans met the administrator, but he's yet to establish which bit of the Sky Blues holds their Football League membership. We have to look back and look at evidence effectively going back 18, 19 years. And there's a lot of that information and documentation that isn't to hand, so we are asking questions, we are writing to people and we are waiting for answers and until such times we get those answers it's very difficult to say where it lies. Former chairman Joe Elliott is part of the consortium backed by the American property tycoon Preston Haskell. They'd made their bid even before the administrator opened the floor to offers. We're going to have competition but at the end of the day we believe in what we're saying and if we can't um, do it so be it. So we are trying but we just cannot build people's hopes up too much. We've been in contact with the Football League today to ask them what they think about the current situation with Coventry City. However, they haven't replied so far. Two months ago, Coventry City moved out of the Rico Arena in a dispute over unpaid rent. Can you imagine Coventry without a football club? No. No, never. Sky Blue's have always been here. Sky Blue Army, isn't it? The city's a bit dead as it is, so I think it would make it more of a ghost town than what it already yeah. is. Devastating for the people, the supporters, uh, especially the young people who are coming along to support them. They'd have to travel away, wouldn't they? Your city, we Sisu. Coventry fans have long been calling for the current owner's Sisu to get out of the club, but that prospect doesn't look any closer this evening. Dan Pallet, BBC Midlands Today, Coventry. Well, joining us now is football finance expert Dr John Beach from Coventry University. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, to put it politely, this is all a bit of a mess, isn't it? So from a business point of view, who on earth would want to get involved? Well, I, I think everybody was hoping for clarity today, but um, it's really just confirmed this is indeed yes. a dog's breakfast. Now, what about this golden share? Um, why is it so difficult to, to locate? It's a question of, um, it's not physically locating, it's not somebody's tucked it down the back of a sofa and <laughs> lost it. it, it's who actually, uh, sorry, where the ownership rests in this um, complex structure of companies that have been set up. But that is absolutely vital to any buyer, isn't it? It's absolutely vital. Without it, you cannot participate in the matches of the Football League. Well, we heard in, in Dan Pallet's report there that, understandably, Sky Blues fans are very, very anxious. There isn't a lot of time to sort this out, is there? No, and it's getting increasingly tighter. And this, of course, isn't the only issue that's going on. There's, mm. there's a threatened court case by CSU against ACL. There's the issue of where they're going to play. Um, and who is going to be the owner? I mean, we've really got three parallel issues that all need to be resolved before the next season starts. What are the chances of that happening, do you think? Very worrying. Um, given the sheer complexity of it, I, I'm, I am concerned myself that this will be resolved in time. So what are the options for the club? Well, it depends what you mean by the club, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> That's part of the problem, yes, isn't it? That yeah. is the whole problem. Yeah. Who, who owns what? Um, which is the bit that will be participating in football next season. Mm. So it, there are no simple answers. So Something else that we heard from, from the fans there as well was the, the worry about whether they would be playing in Coventry, the impact that would have on the city. What's the likelihood? 
if we ignore the ownership issue, which we clearly can't, but if we could, then they could go into exile as long as they put up a bond and they guarantee to come back within, well, typically five years. Um, it's difficult to see how that could actually happen because it would, it would mean either there is a, a resolution of um, the situation with ACL so that they can come back to, to the RICO, or they'd have to build a new stadium, which clearly is, is just a no-starter. Mm -hmm. Anything like this happened before? There aren't any direct precedents um, in terms of, of moving away and coming back. Rotherham is perhaps an example. Mm -hmm. um, they were forced into playing a, in, in Sheffield and then did move back, but they had to put up a bond. But it's fair to um, say it's, it's They had to build unique. a new stadium and they had the full support mm -hmm. of the council, okay. which wouldn't be the case here. Dr John Beach, thank you very much. Thank you. Coming up later in the programme.